town. And it'll be the perfect time. And when does she go there? Go where? Day after tomorrow. Go where, damn it? Wait a minute. What was that? What was that? Uh, she's home. I'm, I, I gotta go. Is anything wrong? I just heard a murder being planned. What? On the kitty com, a man and a woman. What, are you kidding? I'm telling you, I heard it. Well, honey, maybe it was some kind of, you know, broadcast interference, you know, TV signal or something. No, no, this was no TV signal. This stuff was much too sexy for TV. But what are we going to do about you know who? What can we do? I don't know. Are you talking about murder? I'm talking about us, Brent. Margo, oh my God. The way it used to be. That night before the car accident when you brought him back from the dead using jumper cables. I'm a doctor. But you're also a man, Brent. But murder. Say yes, Brent. Yes. Yes to your passions. Yes to your hopes. Yes to us. Mm. Mm. Boy, would you like some prime time sure has changed. See, that must have been it. That's not them. How can you tell? Because she's calling him Brent and he's calling her Margo. The people I heard were Don and Judy. Yeah, well, obviously there are two other characters on the show. This was real, Ross. It wasn't television. All right, all right. Maybe it was real. Let's assume it was real. You probably just misunderstood it. That's all. Ross, the words I heard were kill and murder. Yeah, well, that could have meant a lot of things. Like what? I don't know. Look, maybe there was some kind of uh, practical joker at the kitty cop factory. God. I'm just trying to add a little perspective here. Ross, at 9 o'clock at night, the day after tomorrow, Don, somebody's wife, is going to be murdered. We have an obligation to our neighbors. I'm going to call the police. I think we should help. All right. This is Pegler. Oh, yes. Hi, Detective Block. You want to come this way? Sure. I thank you for seeing me so late. This is going to sound like the craziest thing. I'll explain it to you. It's, it's, it's the strangest thing. Okay. Well, I did right after check the TV to see if there was any interference, but there wasn't any. So I guess the only solid piece of evidence that we have is that his name is Don and hers is Judy. Oh, that's a clue. Right. Not evidence. Oh, yeah. Well, technically, I guess. Where'd you get this? Toy Town. And, and how does it work? Is it just plugged into the wall? Yes. We had the transmitter plugged into the baby's room, and the receiver was in the bathroom. What'd you pay for it? Excuse me? Oh, I'm just curious. I've got a grandchild coming in two months, my first. <laughs> Congratulations. Well, it was $39.95. Yeah, that's a lot. So what about this case? Uh, what case? Well, I realize it sounds a little weird, but you are going to check this out, aren't you? How? We don't know who they are or where they are. Uh, quite frankly, Miss Pegler, that they are. So, like, nothing's happening with this? Well, well, look, if, if by any chance you should hear anything more, don't hesitate to call. We're here to help. Oh, and thanks for letting me know about this. Mm. Well, thank you. Sure. Have a nice evening. May I offer a theory as to what this might be? Absolutely. I'd be happy to hear any theory. Well, maybe what's going on here is, you know, this being the suburbs and... Well, you know, you giving up your work and staying home with a baby and being by nature a very committed activist, that, well, there's bound to be a period of adjustment. I never said this before because, quite frankly, I was afraid to make you want to back out of buying a house. But, Marcia, maybe there's sometimes value in, in being uninvolved. Just... Having a family, cooking dinners, you know, mowing the lawn, growing tomatoes. Thank you, Ross, for your theory as to what's going on. Oh, Sparky, even the cops said there's nothing to this. Ross, I heard what I heard, and if I can figure out where it came from and how to stop it, I'm going to do it. <laughs> you sound like that first day I saw you, you know, when you're throwing those bagels through the cafeteria windows. Well, that 
better bagels, didn't we? Yes, we did. Sometimes that happens. It does. You see, what this actually is is a little radio transmitter. Every now and then, the neighbors have one coded to the same frequency, and you pick up your neighbor's baby. Oh. Well, I don't think this was a neighbor's baby. Is it possible that somebody could have tinkered with it at the factory, you know, maybe pulled a practical joke or something like this? That's doubtful. Japanese aren't known to be big practical jokers. <laughs> no. <clears throat> of course, what it could be is a cordless phone. It's rare, but sometimes the frequencies interfere. Anyway, I'll be happy to exchange it for you. Cordless phone? How far does the frequency reach on those things? Well, you could get reception. Poor quality, but reception up to thousand feet, maybe a little more. Anyway, it's no problem. I'm pretty sure a different one won't pick up the conversation. Uh, thanks, I'll keep it. equals 500 feet, so two inches equals a thousand feet. And basically, a thousand feet covers a whole block and both sides of the street. That's a fair number of houses, isn't it? 108. And guess what else I figured out? What's that? Whose ever cordless phone this is, all of these secret conversations are happening in a certain room. So, only the signal from that room reaches as far as our bathroom. Well, what does that tell you? Well, that's why I haven't heard any of their other conversations. Oh, about the murder. About the murder? Nothing. Then where are you going? Planned. What is this? Well, look who's here. Hi, Cynthia. Listen, I'm here to talk to you about selling Betty Jean homewares. I had a hunch about you. Come on in. So is it something I could start pretty quickly, like maybe tomorrow? Well, certainly. I could get you all set up right here. Oh. Let me introduce you to my hubby. Don, this is Marsha Pegler, who's going to be one of our new Betty Jean gals. This is my husband, Don Corman. How do you do? I can't believe this. What are you so upset about? 
Well, I feel like I'm watching the diary of a mad housewife in Fast Forward. We're in the community 24 hours and already you're a Betty Jean homeware salesperson. Sweetheart, it's the perfect way to get inside these people's houses and to find out who's named Don and who's named Judy. And who has a cordless phone. Well, I've already got a Don suspect, though he's not the type. Hmm. But they do have a cordless phone. Help us and save us. Look at it this way. By tomorrow night at 9 o'clock, one way or the other, all of this is going to be behind us. What I'm worried about is what we have in front of us. Binocufocals are the perfect gift for Father's Day, Marianne. They're ideal for sporting events. They leave both hands free. Wow. Bob would love these. Bob? Your husband's name is Bob? Yeah. <sighs> Great. And this handy item is the extendo stick. Watch how handy this is for those hard-to-reach spots. What do you think? Do you need that? And if you're like me, you want to keep your floors sparkling clean. Well, this is the perfect thing. And these keep you neat and pretty. Mm. My name is Marsha Pegler, and I'm representing Betty Jean Homewares. We have some wonderful products for your home and your car and your office. Many things you and your wife would love. Oh, this was on your stamp. Thank you. My name is Marsha Pegler, and I was hoping I could have just a few minutes of your time to talk to you about some exciting new products from Betty Jean Homewares. I'm sorry, excuse me. Are you all right? Oh, yeah. I was just watching General Hospital. I know it's dumb, but it can be so comforting. Yeah, kind of like therapy, right? Yeah. Do you watch it, too? Uh, no. Oh. What were you saying? Oh, uh, yes. Well, I, I have this free basting brush to give you, and I was hoping to share with you some of the extraordinary new ideas for your home or office or car. Oh, sure. Come on in. Margaret, was it? Yeah. Well, it's Marcia. I'm Judy Hecker. Really? What? I, I mean, hi, Judy. I, I'm sort of new at this. I... Um, so, there's a Judy Lipton and there's a Judy Hecker, who it turns out is married to Don Hecker. Then there's this older guy named Don, Don Corman. Uh, all within a...